Verizon officially launched its 5G network back in early April in just a few select cities. And so today I actually got to spend the day roaming around the streets of Chicago to test out its 5G network and see what it's like to have those blazing fast internet speeds right in the palm of your hand. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. As of right now, there are only a couple of phones that are 5G capable, and although we do expect there to be a 5G iPhone available next year, for this testing we had to use an LG V50 and a Samsung Galaxy S10 5G. With that said, we took to the streets of Chicago looking for 5G nodes that hang out on these light posts. As you can see here, the 4G LTE node is the cylindrical one that's at the top of the light post, and right below is the new 5G node. These nodes are scattered throughout downtown Chicago, and they're near some popular tourist areas like the Willis Tower and even near the famous Bean. Once we found these nodes and our phone's data status changed from 4G to 5G, it was time to perform a few speed tests. Back when Verizon launched the 5G network, the company boasted speeds averaging 450 megabits per second, with some speed tests topping out at one gigabit per second. Fast forward to nearly three months later, and we almost hit a max speed of two gigabits per second. And it's actually been done before in other cities, and it's happened in Chicago before, but unfortunately, it has not been done on camera, and we were very, very close. I think we hit something around 1.978, and then again, somewhere around 1.963 but it was an incredible sight to see with something that fast in the palm of your hands. I went around to as many nodes as I possibly could during my day, and while I did reach some pretty impressive speeds ranging from 1.5 to nearly two gigabits per second, I did notice that speeds were inconsistent at times. One speed test could be nearly sub 100 megabits per second, and then a reattempt could bring us nearly one gig. So there is a little bit of inconsistency there. The inconsistency is to be expected, and of course Verizon is constantly working on improving this network each and every day, but for now, expect your speeds to vary drastically depending on location, device, etc. Even trees and windows, or sometimes heat from direct sunlight on the phone can affect performance of 5G during these very early stages. Regardless of the inconsistencies, I was very impressed with some of the 5G speeds that I was getting, and if you put it in perspective with the 4G speeds that I was getting, which was also still very good, sometimes topping out at nearly 200 megabits per second, uh, and I was getting disappointed when I was only hitting like 1.3 gigabits per second and not getting that too. It's just kind of funny that uh, once you see that in perspective, there is a massive difference in speeds between these two networks. So how does this speed translate in the real world? Well, streaming music and movies is already pretty smooth on a solid 4G LTE connection, and of course, it worked flawlessly for us on 5G with little to zero buffering times whatsoever. But what about downloading that content to your device for later use? Well, we did try out a few different scenarios, and our first example was downloading an episode of Stranger Things on Netflix, which was approximately two to 300 megabytes, and downloading via the Netflix app took merely a few seconds compared to standard 4G LTE connection, which, well, took so long that I didn't even wanna wait for it to finish downloading. This was more or less the case with pretty much all of our real-world speed tests, and it was pretty remarkable to see what you can do in just a short amount of time with these fast speeds. So for example, if you don't have any in-flight entertainment, you can download an entire season of shows on Amazon Prime, and you can do that in the cab on your way to the airport in just a few minutes. Mobile games can also be massive in file size, and let's just say you're on the go, and your child wants to play a game on your phone. PUBG, for example, is a staggering two gigabytes in file size, and our 5G compatible phone was able to download this game nearly instantly. With 5G, it seems as if gone are the days of having to wait until you're on Wi-Fi in order to download something, at least in terms of download speeds. Upload speeds are not quite 5G ready yet, and so we're still relying on the 4G LTE node for this, and so those speeds aren't necessarily impressive, but for most people, download speeds will be their main focus. As I mentioned before, when we did our speed test, you do get some inconsistent speeds depending on your location, and that did carry over into the real world tests. So when we did the PUBG the first time, it was blazing fast, but if we moved to a different node or just moved a little bit, it wasn't nearly as fast. It was still very impressive, but it wasn't like an instant download. So 
that's going to be a little bit of an issue as they try to improve the network moving forward. So even though it took a few extra minutes the second time we downloaded PUBG, this is a lot better than when we tried it on our 4G phone, which really couldn't even begin the download at all. The future of mobile data is no doubt very exciting, and as the 5G network continues to expand and get better, I'm curious to see how everyday users will take advantage of these blazing fast speeds. Verizon is rolling out 5G to 30 different cities in 2019, with Denver, Minneapolis, Providence, St. Paul, and of course, Chicago already available. Pricing for 5G will vary, but starts at around $85 a month for a single line plan. And of course, the more phones you add, the cheaper it gets, and is currently available on the LG V50 ThinQ 5G, Samsung Galaxy S10 5G, and the Motorola Moto Z4 with the Snap-on 5G Moto Mod. So go ahead and let us know in the comment section down below what you think of these 5G speeds and the 5G network overall, and what you would plan on doing with those blazing fast speeds in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.